Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've seen my last video, then you know that we are expecting, again, baby number three in April next year. If you haven't seen that video, I will leave that linked on the screen and down below for you guys to check it out. But, spoiler alert, we are expecting a baby girl in early April next year. Um, I am filming this at nearly 14 weeks pregnant, so I'm going to give you guys uh, some updates on how my first trimester have gone. Um, because... We're basically out of it now. Um, and so, before I jump into it, if you guys are new to my channel, my name is Jess, and I do all videos on all things, usually hair and beauty, with a little bit of lifestyle thrown in there. Obviously, you're watching some lifestyle content, but if hair and beauty is also your thing, don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. And thank you so much for being here and being a part of this community. So, let's jump into it. Um, I will preface this by saying if baby and lifestyle content is not your thing, please feel free to not watch this. Um, I have plenty of other beauty videos that you are more than welcome to go and watch. Um, and not all videos recently will be up with baby content. Um, I'm just trying to catch up a little bit on this content before I can get back to my regular scheduling. And I will talk about sort of why... Um, my hair content has had a break in this video. So let's go through the first trimester. I have noted everything down in weeks by weeks. I've sort of gone uh, weeks one to six, then seven to nine, then 10 to 13. And then I've just sort of noted down some other things to mention. So let's jump in weeks one to six. There's not a whole ton in this sort of stage to uh, note in this video i will be doing a two week weight symptoms video because of uh i like watching those and i'm nosy and also because we did actually go through uh ob this time and we did have some a little bit of fertility help so i will go through that this piece of hair um i will go through that in a different video but weeks one to six were um pretty uneventful um my main symptom was very very sore breasts like really really sore like never been this sore in my life like breastfeeding sore um and it was really weird because i've never been that person that gets super sore during like my time of the month or the lead up or even with my boys i never had that as a symptom like ever everyone people always complained about it and i was like mm -mm, that wasn't me not until my milk came in i was breastfeeding so that was like my major major sort of red flag symptom um but i also had really bad skin really bad acne like it was just it was awful my whole face was breaking out it was patchy and dry and oily in places and just really bad acne um i had obviously really severe fatigue which sort of kicked in around that six week mark um super tired all the time and sort of like needing to nap feeling that like heavy fatigue feeling you know because you're just so tired that your whole body like your limbs just hurt that sort of fatigue as well as lots of bloating um which is very normal as an early pregnancy symptom also as a period symptom but also it was in relation as a reaction to the fertility medication that i took um very common there as well so i believe bloating was a big thing with my boys as well that's not unusual um but that was very obvious. I felt like I showed so early and I wouldn't have been showing. It was just really, really bad bloat. Um, I also had my um, like ultrasound, early ultrasound with my obstetrician. I don't have any pictures from that ultrasound because it was literally just a proof of viability ultrasound at six weeks. Um, and they checked baby's heartbeat, which was 120 at that particular time. There was very little to actually see at this point, And so I didn't actually get any pictures. That was my weeks one to six. It was fairly cruisy. I was tired, but nausea hadn't hit yet. Um, we found I found out pretty early that I was pregnant and I'd done a few blood draws by this point. Um, and so I know all my levels were looking really good, but nothing else to really note. Weeks seven through nine is when my morning sickness really kicked in. Um, I had nausea, I had vomiting, I had food sensitivities, I had food aversions. It was a rough, it was a rough time. It was probably, I would like to say it was the worst, which is what I've written, but then we'll, we'll come back, we'll come back to that. It felt like the worst. Um, this is when I started taking 
Zofrin. It's what my doctor gave me for the nausea. Um, because at this stage it was, I was throwing up everything and anything that I put in my mouth. It didn't matter what it was. It didn't matter what time of day it was. Um, there was just nothing. There was nothing that like stayed down at all. Um, didn't matter if it was like dry biscuits or something like greasy. Didn't matter if it was something I was craving um, or something that sounded good, which there wasn't a lot at this period of time. This is sort of went where I went through like a major food aversion. And because they sort of recommend you snack regularly um, at this point in your pregnancy uh, to help with nausea. And I found that I didn't want anything. So I went through stages of different things. Um, so there was sour worms. There was uh, the red, it's not licorice, but like red twists, uh, just dry chips, uh, crackers, Ritz crackers, just all of it. And I've pretty much thrown all of it up at least once. Um, soft drinks, I went through a stage of just lemonade, went through a stage of like drinking Coke, which I'm not a soft drink drinker, if anyone knows me in real life. Uh, and this was sort of the time that I went through that phase where I was trying anything and everything to feel better. Um, I also had um, an ult two more ultrasounds at this point. One with my OB who again did not give me pictures. Um, it was again just to check baby was growing um, and it was sort of like my follow-up to make sure baby had grown from the last one and one was through my doctor in the hospital um, that was the official dating scan where I got my first actual picture of baby and my first like take home picture I will insert that picture on the screen here for you because I have it over there um obviously cutting out all the personal information um but baby just kind of looks like a little jelly bean at this point anyway but it was nice baby had um the one thing that was weird was baby had a really high heartbeat uh nothing dangerously high but high for my boys uh both my boys sort of sat in the sort of like mid one. 40s to 150s always my whole pregnancy and baby was like 160 180 it was it was it was just that that was baby uh, talking about some of my symptoms and aversions during that period of time was I had a huge aversion to red meat any red meat um, raw red meat cooked red meat could not stand the smell of cooking red meat mm -mm, even now it just makes me feel like little and I'm having a little bit now um, but couldn't couldn't even be downstairs, couldn't be near the kitchen if there was red meat cooking. Um, most strong smells were also setting me off at this point. Set really scented cleaning products, uh, my shampoos and conditioners, anything that was really well scented. Um, everything made me feel really sick at this point. The smell of coffee. This was sort of when I went off coffee and I wasn't having it at all. Um, which is very unusual for me with my boys. I had coffee. Excuse me, decaf mostly, but caffeine, caffeinated as well. The whole way through, don't come for me about coffee. Okay, just, just don't. Just don't come for me. I am drinking only the recommended amount by my hospital and my doctors. It is safe. I am fine. Just don't come for me about coffee. Just don't. Um, as for cravings, I had some really weird cravings this pregnancy. Um, I believe I did a little bit with the boys as well, but it was fried rice. Fried rice was like a major craving for me for a few weeks. I did have it. It was amazing. Uh, Coke, but that was more for like the sick feeling. Uh, sour lollies. Like I said, sour worms. I have some right there for when I feel sick. Um, sweets. I had a thing for like wanting sweet things like chocolate uh but then i would normally throw it back up like it didn't matter it's like i really wanted it though eggs and bacon it was something i craved it was one of those things that actually didn't throw up so don't know why but it was it was one of those things that just sounded really good to me as for symptoms um i was very very fatigued at this point Still napping most days. Um, like I said, nausea a lot. Uh, the vomiting with the Zofran. I was also noticing still the breast pain and also growth. Uh, which again, I never had that with my boy pregnancies. I never had that with my boys. I didn't notice any changes 
there until really until I gave birth um, and my milk started coming in. Uh, this time it's been like from the beginning. There's been an obvious growth. Um, also, bloat slash a little bit of showing early. By by nine weeks, I reckon I was showing a tiny bit. Um, baby's so small at nine weeks, but I have a feeling it was just third pregnancy. My uterus knew exactly what it was doing, and it was quite an obvious, distinct growth to me. Um, I was still fitting into some of my normal clothes, nothing that was like too tight, but some of them, um, and so that was nice, but definitely there. And then again, the smell sensitivity, just continuing. Um, the one thing that I got that was really weird at this point and has continued uh, to change through my pregnancy was I got super, super greasy scalp this particular time. Um, and if you have been watching any of my beauty videos in the past, then you would know that I genuinely have quite dry hair and quite a dry scalp to normal. Um, I don't get greasy, really. I have to work, oh, excuse me. I have to work really hard to get greasy hair. Like it has to be a long time or I have to use a lot of oil products. And my hair was so greasy. I would wash it and then the next day it would be greasy again. And I just was like, I was too sick to care. Um, it just went up in a messy bun, really. But it was a really odd symptom that I've never had, um, ever in my life. As well as I've had increased hair shedding, which is a bit odd for me as well. Because normally during pregnancy you lose less hair and your hair is thicker and nicer. And I've just not had that at all. And this was when that extra hair shedding sort of kicked in. Um, it was also when I stopped seeing my OB specialist. Weeks 10 to 13, I obviously had my NIPT test at weeks 10. Um, we also found out the gender of the baby, which I have already said, but if you weren't paying attention, it is a little girl. I have two boys, and so a girl was quite a little bit of a shock, but also a very welcome surprise. So we're kind of really excited about that. Um, and all of those tests came back low risk, which is awesome. Um, we also had, uh, an ultrasound at that point, the clinic that I do my NIPT test with, they do a 10 week, like they do a scan on the day that you get your blood test and baby was measuring two days ahead at that point. So doing really well, everything that they wanted. I also had a, my first midwife appointment and my first OB, uh, hematologist appointment with my hospital that I will be giving birth with. Um, and they both went fine. The OB appointment with the hematologist was because I have a blood disorder. And at this stage, it's to continue as is. And I would meet her and talk to her again in the new year. Um, and the midwife was just just general questions and how I'm going and personal information. So nothing really exciting there. I won't see them again until uh, 22 weeks. So up until then, I will see my GP and I will have my 20 week scan at some point. Um, between weeks sort of like 10 and 11 was when my morning sickness got a little bit up and down. Um, I thought I would have days where I thought I was feeling a lot better. And then I would have days where not so great. At this point I am still taking and was still taking Zofran, half a tablet once a day, mostly in the mornings because that is when I feel the sickest. Um, and then again at night, but I'm not taking any, I'm taking just, uh, reflux medication at night, which seems to be helping. Um, but it was a little sporadic at this point in my morning sickness. Um, again, my cravings hadn't really changed. I was still craving fried rice, but for the most part I was craving just carbs, just carby typed foods, which I think was because for the most part of, um, the morning sickness and feeling nauseous, the carbs just help. Um, I also had my first Pfizer vaccine. I had my first COVID vaccine. If you guys are not Australian, then you don't know that we have implemented or the government has implemented a whole bunch of uh, vaccine based rules. Um, and we are currently still 
in lockdown. We are the longest lockdown city in the world at this stage. <sighs> Being pregnant in lockdown was not fun. Um, because you kind of want to get out and you want to do things and you want to take your mind off feeling sick. And I haven't been able to. But I did, at the advice of my OB and my hematologist, get my first Pfizer vaccine. I will be due for my second one soon. Um, as for the Pfizer vaccine, it didn't hurt. I had no immediate uh, like flu-like symptoms. My arm was sore, but my main reaction, I didn't get a fever or anything like that. I know people get. Uh, my main reaction was actually uh, increasing my sort of morning sickness symptoms for a couple days, um, by which for the day of my vaccine and probably two days after, um, anything I tried to eat came back up. Anything. All day, every day, for those two and a half days, I, TMI, I apologize, exorcism styled, threw up everything. It was horrendous. It was probably the worst my morning sickness was my whole pregnancy because it wasn't like just normal feeling nauseous. It would just come out of nowhere. I'd eat something and within like 20 minutes, I would just... That was probably my main symptom, reaction. Not looking forward to the second one. Um, however, with the government incentives uh, and rulings in place, I will, uh, we, we didn't have a choice regardless. Um, I do want to be vaccinated. Obviously, I want to protect me and the baby, and that's a very controversial subject, so please don't come for me in the comments. I have done what was recommended for me by my doctors because of my blood clotting disorder um, and what's going to be the safest. But it, yeah, wasn't a fun, was not a fun experience. However, that I think was a pregnancy thing because everyone else I know has not had that, obviously. Um, and they just got like a little bit of a sore feet, a little bit of a sore arm and felt a bit tired. So as for, um... Anything else happening between sort of the 10 to 13 weeks before I just go on to sort of updates. Um, around 12 weeks, I started tolerating coffee again. Um, like I said, don't come for me about my coffee. I'm well within my doctor's and my hospital's recommendations. Um, I have definitely started showing, at least it's quite obvious to me. I definitely feel like I'm showing. Um, my stomach is firm in that sort of lower stomach region, which says it's not bloat anymore. Um, it is, like I said, my third pregnancy, and so I did show earlier, and I feel like I am probably a little bit bigger than I was with my boys. Um, but at the end, that sort of evened out with me. So we'll see how we go. I am still taking the Zofran as I spoke. Um, I am still having some of those food and smell aversions, not as badly. I am still throwing up on occasion, but it's not all the time, not every day. It comes and goes. Generally, it's in the morning. Sometimes it's before I've even eaten. Sometimes it's after. Um, I have started working out again. Nothing too crazy. I am mostly walking on the treadmill or cycling, or I do my Stairmaster on a very slow setting. Um, and I've also started including light weight routine for like 20 minutes or 15 minutes. But for the most part, I'm just walking on the treadmill or cycling. So I'm really easing myself back into it. Um, as for any other sort of places, things that I need to mention, um, we have started... Oh, that's a lot, really. We have sort of allocated what's going to be the baby's room, which is my office. It's no longer going to be my office. My office is now situated here in my master bedroom. Um, but we do need to get some renovations done before we can do anything for her room. So we have a doorway we need to shut and a wall we need to paint, which will hopefully be done in the next couple weeks before the Christmas period. Because then I feel like after the Christmas period, it's just going to go really fast because we're going away and it's my birthday. And then... My oldest starts school, and then it would just be 
from when he turns five and then that's that's it so a little bit crazy um as for anything else uh i think that's really it i think the only other thing that i want to mention is sort of what i said about my hair earlier in the video and that is like i said i was having really oily hair for a couple weeks now my hair is particularly dry like obviously dry um you can probably see it's looking drier than usual i have put oil in my hair today i did blow dry it which i don't usually um but it is particularly dry i'm getting more hair loss than normal nothing extreme but more than normal for me so that's interesting that's just a weird hormonal thing that's going on um i do need haven't been doing my oil treatments because honestly i haven't been up for them but i will be trying to include those back in my routine i'm hoping with my oil treatments on a bi-weekly basis or like two times weekly basis that i will get some more hydration into my hair because right now my hair is just uber dry and really struggling and i actually use one of my more moisturizing shampoos today and conditioners so that is a weird pregnancy thing that's happened uh never happened with my boys my hair was always really lovely and shiny and luscious and grew really fast um this time around i'm growing hair everywhere at super quick speeds but my hair is super dry not greasy anymore just super dry so that is why I haven't been putting up hair videos because any new products that I'm trying, uh, it's kind of hard to tell whether the products are causing the issues or whether it's just my hair itself. It is sort of like a day-to-day -day basis and it's kind of hard to judge. So I have tried some new products recently and I was really not impressed by them. Uh, but I have a feeling that is because of my hair and not so much the product so i'm still giving those a go hoping to come and review them for you very soon but yes i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you are new to my channel please don't forget to click the subscribe button and let me know down in the comments if you are pregnant too i feel like lots of people are pregnant at the moment which is super exciting i feel like they're all like lockdown quarantine covid babies but uh let me know in the comments and uh, welcome to the family if you are new don't forget to click subscribe and thank you so much for being here and watching my video today i really really appreciate it and i will hopefully see you in my next one i will also be filming a two-week weight symptoms video as well as a baby girl what we have for baby haul and those will be coming on my channel soon so if you are interested in that mummy content please like i said click subscribe if you are not then please sit tight because there will be beauty videos coming soon I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Bye.